Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for being here um, to start today off. Good morning to you guys. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing? I, I should have known NFL guys wearing jackets. <laughs> I'm up here looking sloppy with my, uh, my T-shirt. Um, so we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff today uh, around kind of the future of, of technology relating to sports, uh, safety, investing for players. Um, but I think it would be helpful maybe to describe very briefly how the, the three of you kind of work together and what this kind of one team collective actually is because it's relatively new, right? It's from just at the end of last year. Yep, so we launched in December. Do you want to maybe give us a, a quick spiel on sure. what you guys do? Sure. Um, so uh, I run uh, the commercial business for the NFL Players Association. So we do all the licensing and marketing of um, players, video games, apparel, um, uh, trading cards, collectibles, that sort of thing. And we've done that for about 25 years. Um, and so over the last few years, we've been trying to think about new areas to go into. And that led us into a series of conversations with venture capital funds and um, some academic institutions and some corporate partners uh, about what is going on in the venture space and what, uh, how it relates to sports and sports technology. And what we ended up with is a twist, our twist, on a venture capital fund or an accelerator, um, which launched in December called the One Team Collective. And uh, Isaiah, uh, to my right, and Marcus on the end here, um, are both on our athlete advisory board. It's a mix of current and former NFL players who are helping us um, test out new technology from the vantage of, of both um, athletes um, and as business people, um, folks who have participated in deals and invested in deals. Um, and we're really super lucky to have these guys as engaged yeah. as they have been. So you guys are, are basically identifying startups similar to how any investor might and offering a bunch of different kind of services and connections, right? Either be it to players, current or former, other, you know, Isaiah, you have a marketing. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing because it's more on the marketing analytics side of all this stuff. Yeah, so uh, as Ahmad said, I'm on the athlete advisory board, but I also sit in a unique position. I'm also on the board for the One, Ke one Team Collective. So uh, I started a company, I started investing when I was a player and I'm playing eight years. I've now made over 20 investments in tech, biotech. And been a, you know, investor as well as entrepreneur. The, my latest company is called the Sports Innovation Lab. And we launched that, it's a sports market research and analysis arm. So it's a highly fragmented market, a lot of confusion in the marketplace. And what we've done is really uh, look at the landscape and organize it across 30 different segments. So that was a natural fit for the One Team Collective to help uh, survey the landscape and understand um, what the competitive landscape looks like and where the opportunity lies uh, to, to really help be an arm. And we've got a pretty large uh, customer base as it, as it is right now, but really seeing sports as a way to start a much larger story. Uh, quantified athlete is an extension of quantified self, a trillion dollar industry, which will be. And we're really at the, 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 the tip of the iceberg with that. Smart venue is really smart city and IoT, right? It's a testing ground yeah. for that. So a much larger story, and um, you know we've our, we've got early success. Obviously, um, one of our early clients is Gatorade, uh, NFL, PA, um, IBM, Google, Intel. Uh, so we've got a really really uh, great list, and really helping to navigate that space is not easy. And saw a really, uh, need in the market, and and, and, and tried to build over a year. Uh, vetting over now 2,000 companies globally. Got it. Uh, not just a U.S. thing, but global. So companies that come through this accelerator, they get to work with folks like yourself. They get access to, to players like Marcus and, and other NFL folks. Marcus, like, you were telling me a little bit backstage that you've been doing some advising of tech companies. How common is it for current NFL players to get involved in investing on the side when they're not playing? and? You know, I guess, are you advising other players as a member of this kind of council? Are you helping your, your fellow colleagues in the NFL make these kinds of decisions? Or who helps you guys with this? Yeah, I think, um, I think over the last handful of years, you've seen uh, more and more athletes get involved in, in the investment world, uh, specifically in the sports tech world. And, and I think it, it, um, it lends itself to, to an opportunity to get involved in, into an industry where you come in and kind of an industry leader or an expert in a lot of ways. And, um, I've, been, I've been investing since 2012. I've, I've helped to, to run an athlete-led um, athlete angel investment group out of New York um, and slowly transitioned into the consulting side just because I, I saw an avenue to, to really um, get on the ground level with some of these startup companies and these early stage companies that um, didn't necessarily involve cutting a check. 
And I think the, the more that you see athletes, influencers get involved in the space, I think you'll start to see more and more iterations of, of you know, those guys getting involved at different stages of companies. How do you make sure that uh, folks are making wise financial decisions? And obviously you can't control what someone does with their money, but you, 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 know, you guys both played in the NFL, you obviously work closely with, with athletes. Uh, once you get money, people like to come and pitch their wonderful ideas to you. So how do you, you know, I think in the, in the past it sounds like people would invest in like a restaurant or a, a car dealership or whatever. Now it's tech, like there's a lot of tech. How do you continue to like vet those types of companies? Is that something that maybe this incubator is intended to help with or, or how do you make sure that people are kind of making wise decisions when it comes to investing? I mean, I'll, I'll, I can start with that. I think uh, one of the biggest things, and I know Marcus, I know you, you do this as well at Ahmad, you do it just de facto, uh, which is help give advice, guys transitioning, guys playing uh, across a variety of sports as well. I, the biggest thing I always like to say is you, you have to go in, regardless of what it is, if, even if it's a restaurant or a car dealership, you have to go in and learn everything you possibly can learn about that. Talk to as many people as you can and you have to live it. You don't just throw your money over a wall and just say, hey, you know, forget about it, it's gonna be right. there. And before even deploying that capital, make sure uh, you spend a lot of the time with the people themselves, right? Know the space, know, know the competitive landscape, know the people, and when you do that and you feel uh, like you've got enough really, really smart people around you to that validate what you see, uh, you start to learn and you start to pick up patterns over time, but that doesn't, that doesn't happen overnight, just, just like it didn't happen overnight getting to the NFL. That's the thing you, you, uh, you continue to say, it's just, there's an education piece here, yeah. that you can't just, hey, you know, go around it and hey, let's just get lucky. It's not like that. You gotta dive in, uh, you know, head first and get your hands dirty and, and learn everything from the ground up. Is this, this has to kind of be a player to player thing though, right? I believe it might, the NFLPA can't necessarily get super involved in the way athletes spend their money or can you guys? Yeah, we're never gonna be in the business of telling players what to invest in or, mm -hmm. or what not to invest in unless it's some sort of fraudulent um, potency scheme. But I, I mean, the thing that we will try to do just to add um, uh, on to Isaiah's point about education, I think it is important for, for athletes to get educated. I, I also think we need to be realistic that nobody is going to learn all of it. Yeah. And n no investor, professional investor, um, tries to do that. So what, part of what we try to do is connect our athletes with people like Kleiner Perkins and yeah. Madrona and Intel and BlackRock, all of whom are happy to meet with athletes right. and hear their perspective and, and just meet with them. And so you can learn, you can draft off of that as an athlete. And so. <clears throat> I think sending that message to um, our members is important um, because you know I was always the guy in college that if, if you went to lecture and took notes, I, I would ask you for your notes. Uh, it's inefficient for both of us to take sure. notes. Why, why would we do that? <laughs> right. um, so, so there's a bit of that going on with, with what we're trying to do with, with our members is to say, look, yes, you should absolutely learn it. You have to know the basics. There's no way around that. But don't put it all on yourself because venture and investing those sound cool, but they are absolutely the modern day equivalents of the car washes, the dry cleaners, the restaurants. And it, it in a lot of ways, especially when people's families and friends get involved, right. um, can, can very, very easily lead to failure. Um, Marcus, when you look at uh, the opportunities that athletes have to do kind of endorsements, to be the face of, of a company, a product, whatever it may be, um, there's obviously the big ones, the Nikes and Gatorades of the world, but we're talking now about kind of maybe up and coming, the next whatever it may be. Is this incubator an opportunity for folks like yourself or others in the NFL to kind of get in on the ground floor of someone like that? Is that how you see this? Or what's the role for a player in terms of making this a, an endorsement option? I, I kind of view it in a lot of ways as kind of the new age endorsement. Um, you know, your traditional endorsements, your, your, your Gatorades of the world, your Nikes of the world, um, you kind of plug into to a, a massive machine already. And, um, you know, you, they're able to u utilize your brand um, to, to drive value for, the, for those guys. But I think once you're able to get in on a ground level and you're able to participate in the upside of, of that, that brand and that, that value creation, I think that's a totally different beast. And I think that's... Um, that's part of the intrigue um, that you see with, with athletes and influencers getting, getting involved in the investment world. Is there, is there any um, hesitation or concern when you're dealing with a technology that maybe 
won't pan out, right? I mean, as you mentioned, a lot of really successful investors, they still lose a lot of money uh, and they make bets that don't work, right? So is there a concern of saying, well, I, I like this technology, but I'm afraid of, you know, Marcus Colston being the face of this watch that's going to, you know, be a flop in two years or anything? Or can you really think of it like that? No, I mean, that's, that's to, to piggyback on these guys' points, that's part of the education process. Um, the thing that you'll quickly realize is there's no shortage of opportunities. Sure. Um, the more that you can educate yourself on, on the actual industry that, that you're entering into, um, the, the, the actual business, the product, and, and the team behind that product is probably the most important piece. Uh, the more that you can educate yourself, you know, around all these factors, I mean, the, the better off you're, you're going to be. Yeah. And I just want to add to that. I think what Marcus just said right there, jumping that chasm from endorsement to actual business partner is where I know a lot of guys, if they want to put the work in, it can go. And it takes a lot of work and it takes, it takes a lot of smart people around you to help guide you there. But you absolutely can from being just a marketing play to actually being a part of the business and drive strategy and growth. And again, I always like to say, and I, I, I talk to players, like all those amazing things that got you to an elite level of playing, it was all transfer to business. You just got to point them in the right direction. You have to bring that passion with you. Yeah. And you have to find those things in business or whatever else you're going to do that you're going to be passionate about. And you know, I, I couldn't agree more on that. And you become a true business partner uh, rather than just a kind of a marketing play. And, and I think it's fair to say that you know, when it's technology and venture, um, it, it, there's still a lot of parallels to traditional business. Like, mm -hmm. there's plenty of t-shirt companies that came along and fell by the wayside sure. that we've worked with in the past. There's plenty of companies that um, have had new products that wanted um, us to um, work with them or players to work with them. And it sort of depends. I mean, you could be a Tom Brady um, where you're pretty selective and you only work with blue chip brands. And then you could be somebody... Um, more like Peyton Manning, who was much more open, or Drew Brees, um, yeah. much more open with the type and the number of companies that um, he wanted to work with. And if you look back, you know, LeBron James 10 years ago decides to work with Beats, and Beats was nothing at the time. Yeah. And, and you might think, well, why does the world need another headphone company? Yet now everybody knows what it is, and it obviously had a happy ending. And even before that, Vitamin Water and, and, and you know, people outside the sports industry with, like, you know, musicians and entertainers and you know, folks like 50 Cent working with, with them. I think um, those are all examples that worked out, but there were obviously plenty of examples right. in those category, categories that didn't. Uh, but I also say this, and this is part of the beauty of the one team. There's only so many LeBron Jameses. There's only yeah, sure. so many Drew Breeses. Right? I was a grinder. I was never a superstar. I was always going to be a role player, so I had to find where I could fit in and kind of build it from the ground up. And I, you're going to start to see that more and more and more. Uh, to be able to grow that, and you know, the fact is, is, one team collective represents all players, mm -hmm. and the ability to do that in a um, a highly uh, nimble and agile way uh, with earlier stage companies is, is a truly innovative vehicle in and of itself. Yeah, I think my favorite is Marshawn Lynch doing the local plumbing uh, company in Seattle. <laughs> Beacon Plumbing. I'll never forget. That was pretty good. <laughs> um, so you only have this incubator. Um, I'm kind of envisioning. We're obviously talking about tech here, but I'm also kind of envisioning health and safety yeah. as being a priority, especially given where we're at with the NFL today, right? It's, yeah. a, it's obviously a dangerous sport, a lot of injuries. Is that a focus for you guys when you think, who are we going to let into this whole thing? Yeah, I think it's absolutely a focus. Um, it's also an opportunity. Um, our first deal that we uh, announced last week was with a wearable company called Whoop. Which um, you're, you're wearing. I'm wearing it right here, trying to be a good um, spokesman. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's, it looks sort of like a Fitbit, um, but it's really designed to be, um, to help athletes um, maximize their recovery, and it focuses on things like strain and sleep and how um, different uh, aspects of their day-to-day -day life and workouts um, impact those metrics. Which, so the nice thing is, for a first deal, it was interesting from an investment standpoint, it was interesting from a marketing standpoint, they have a product at yeah. retail, um, but then from a data and a health and safety and kind of helping players in the off season, part of the deal is that every player gets one and gets kind of this tailored um, experience with the company to be able to interpret the data and translate that into actionable um, uh, uh, activity during the day for them to tweak and maximize their workouts. And that, but the, like that drives off a, a much larger trend as well, right? right? So initially targeted at, at the elite athletes, but really relevant to all of us. In, in the end, uh, we all want to feel our best. And 
you started to see, I don't know if you've seen that, that uh, you know, a couple commercials out there, but like the, uh, the, the idea of an elite athlete is really no different than what I am now, which is, you know, Joey Bag of Donuts businessman. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I want to feel my best if I have a huge meeting. How can I actually put, put that together and gather data to, to really put together essentially a blueprint to, to yeah. help do that? This whole like data uh, influencing your workout, it, it's not totally new, but it's still pretty new, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I remember it was just a couple of years ago, a bunch of the combine guys were, were doing these camps before the combine to add a tenth of a second to their 40 time or whatever, and they were using all kinds of wearables to do that. Um, Marcus, how much do you guys actually use this stuff as a team, like as a league right now, versus is it just something that you wear in the off season and kind of do on your own? I think a lot of, a lot of guys use it more, more so in the off season because if, if you look at the, the wearables market as a whole, a lot of it is kind of one-to-one, -one, like the, the Fitbits, like the Whoops. Um, but I think with, with that market exploding the way that it has, I think you're starting to see people you know, really progress in the space and get to a, get to a place where you can actually um, see actionable insights. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what's really going to drive the market is if, if I can use this technology and this data to, um, to kind of tell me what I need to be doing as opposed to what I just did, I think you'll start to see it get incorporated more and more, you know, on a team level. Do you feel like it actually helps from your experience using it? Like, does it, I don't know, do you feel more rested or do you say, oh, I was tired today and I saw that in my numbers, I need to change my diet or my sleep or whatever? Yeah, I think, I think as a whole, um, whenever you have objective data driving, you know, decisions and, and driving actions, um, you, you start to feel that impact a little bit more. Um, you kind of get away from, you know, the, the look test and, and how you feel and you start to, to really, um, you start to really get to a place where you can, you can predict what's coming down the pike. Yeah. Isaiah, do you wish you had this when you were playing? Do they have anything like this? Yeah, a couple so, years ago. Yeah, I talk about this all the time. I was trying to be a quantified athlete with a uh, pencil and piece of paper, uh, <laughs> guessing on a variety of different things, and you couldn't have said any better. We're at the, the tip of the iceberg of being able to quantify <laughs> and essentially change the probability that you can feel your best when your best is needed, yeah. right? So from hydration to nutrition to energy expenditure, uh, you name it, you can go down to sleep. I mean, you go name it, start to dial these things in customize for you. Um, we are at the, the, the cusp of that, and uh, the wearables market is also at the cost of being able to gather unique, novel, accurate data sets to then really tell that story, to then take advantage of the capability getting built out in other industries. Um, and you guys are gonna make you sick for, to hear this again, machine learning, deep learning, AI, the ability uh, to take advantage of that, those capabilities being built out in a major way. Uh, on the human body is really, really going to be a massive, yeah. massive market. So uh, you got a smartwatch, or a, a, sorry, a fitness tracker. Uh, Whoop is kind of the first. What else are you guys looking at? I mean, what, uh, like, what we, can you tell we, us about where we've got 300 going? companies that have applied since December when we launched okay. the One Team Collective. All sports tech related? No, um, that, that we've got consumer products that are, you know, wear like headphones, right? Yep. Unbranded. They, they just want marketing support. Um, we have a lot of um, food and, and beverage companies that are kind of designed to, you know, um, uh, maximize, be healthy um, versions of, you know, uh, the, the bag of donuts. Maybe it's <laughs> the bag of organic um, wheat donuts. Yeah. It sounds awful um, in the morning. Um, but, but, you know, there, there's, we've been really pleasantly surprised with the mix of companies. And just on the data and the health and safety stuff, I mean, we, we talk about while they're playing, um, both of these guys are not playing anymore, but you know, we think about how can we help the athletes transition from playing. We want them to maximize their career in a yeah. safe way, but then also be able to live the rest of their lives right. um, and, and, and hope those lives are as long as possible um, and, and live them in, a, in, in the best way possible. And at the end of the day, what all of the stuff we're trying to do with, with our players and our members is we want them to get more out of football than football got out of them. Um, and so that lasts well below, uh, beyond their playing careers. And I think what we're doing with the One Team Collective helps do that, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, we got like 30 seconds, and then Brian said he was going to come tackle us <laughs> off stage. But uh, question for the, the two football guys here. Is there a food that you, like a secret food, a secret drink that you like? Are you guys doing those hand-pressed juices that Silicon Valley uh, costs $400 to, to buy the machine or anything? What's the secret? 
I'm kind of telling myself right now, I'm fresh out of football, so my, my secret foods aren't very good right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I make my own, I'm pretty old school, I make my own smoothies at home. Wow. Uh, with, you know, frozen fruit, some fresh fruit. Probably use whatever. a blender too instead uh, of Yes, a, my yeah. wife's out here in the audience, she's still upset. I know, clean it every single morning. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there eventually. <laughs> uh, fellas, thanks so much for being here, yeah. appreciate it. Thanks. Right, thanks. thanks. Appreciate Thank you. It.